Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm going to be trying out the new water media mat from Waffle Flower. And I'm also going to be showing you five super easy watercolor backgrounds. I thought using this water media mat would be the perfect opportunity to show you five really fun ways to create a background for your cards. So here's what the water media mat looks like when you first buy it. Um, I'm take, peeling it off the packaging. Now that piece of plastic that I just set aside, I'm gonna save that and I'm going to use it whenever I use my mat. And I'm gonna tell you why and show you how I did it. So back in January, I saw this water media mat at Creativation, the trade show for the paper crafting industry. And Nina from Waffle Flower showed me the mat and I was super excited to try it out. And I expressed concern to her about staining of the mat, specifically in the wells that are off to the side that are meant for um, watercolors or inks or things like that, because I really love the idea of having a white surface because then you see the true colors of what you're picking up with your brush. So um, I suggested to her, well, why don't you have some sort of tray that you can put in the wells on the side? And she thought about it. And a couple weeks after Creativation was over and we all went home, she messaged me or emailed me and said, you know what? The packaging will have plastic. So you could cut it out and save the plastic and use that as a tray. So that's absolutely what I'm doing. And I'm just using some sharp scissors. These are some Tim Holtz shears to cut this down. You can use whatever scissors you have on hand. This plastic is not, um, I mean, it's durable, but it's not so thick that you can't cut it. So after I had this piece cut down, I'm going to slide it right over the top of those wells and they fit in perfectly. And that will protect those areas where I can do all of my, um, like keeping the color. And in particular today, I'm going to be doing some watercoloring with, with liquid watercolors. And the thing about liquid watercolors is they always work better when they're in a contained well. So you're going to see me use those today. Also, I wanted to mention that my nine by 12 hardboard that I usually take my projects to fits perfectly into the recessed area on the mat. Um, it slides in there like a puzzle piece. So I've got some Canson XL watercolor paper that I've taped down to my hardboard and then put on the water media mat. I'm using five different colors of Dr. P.H. Martin's Radiant Concentrated Watercolor. I'm using, gosh, I can't remember the color names, but they will be listed down below in the supply section and over at my blog. And I put each one of these colors in a different well over on the side. And I'm going to be using this half inch flat brush from uh, Royal and Lang Nickel. This is their Zen line. And I'm going to be doing a lot of my color mixing like so. The strong concentrated color will be on the left, and then I'm going to water it down and dilute it a little bit on the right. And since I have so many different spots for these colors on the water mini mat, it makes it super easy. So this very first pattern I'm going to show you, I started out trying to make it very precise. And then about three or four strokes in, I thought, you know what, this is just going to be sort of a more organic pattern. And what I'm doing here is I'm making sort of a herringbone pattern, almost like a braided look. And I'm using all of these colors and then mixing a sixth color. I wanted some violet or purple. So I did mix the red and the blue to get a nice purple shade. So as you'll notice, I'm being a little more free with where I'm placing all of these strokes. And I really just wanted to get this background put together and have it be really rainbow-esque. So I am keeping the color, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The color order of all of these strokes and keeping them about the same in rainbow order um, vertically. But I am changing up where the top of each column of colors like what, which color starts at the beginning. So at the first it starts with kind of a purple to red and then the next one over starts with blue to purple and the last one on the right goes from blue to purple to pink. So it's just a cool kind of rainbow of color. And even though it isn't as precise and organized as I had originally planned for this pattern, kind of like that really organic feel. For the second background that I'm going to be doing today, 
I'm using some masking tape. This is some quarter inch masking tape. Um, I picked it up on Amazon. You can get three rolls of it for a reasonable price, or you can actually put some regular painter's tape down on a cutting mat and use a ruler to trim out narrow strips. It's completely up to you. Um, I actually use this narrow masking tape quite a bit, so it, it made sense for me to have a roll of it. So I've put a bunch of just random lines of that masking masking tape and now I'm painting over the top creating a rainbow gradient pattern and I'm just letting it mix from red orange yellow green to blue and I'm after I've painted on one layer and dried it I'm going over it again just to intensify those colors um, as you might know watercolor generally dries down and the color becomes a little bit more muted so if you want a really intense color blend you do have to do it in layers so this is the most satisfying part of this background which is peeling up all of that masking tape I just get so much satisfaction Peeling up this masking tape, I think it's really, really fun. Now, I do want to warn you, when you do masking tape like this, you want to make sure that you press the tape down very firmly onto your watercolor paper. Watercolor paper is textured, and so you do have to really press that tape into the surface of the paper to make sure you don't get any uh, paint pooling under those sides. I do have a little bit of paint that snuck into those intersecting points, but not so bad that I feel I need to go in and correct it. I'm going to leave it just as is. I'm going to peel up this very last piece of tape, and then this background is basically done. I'm going to move on to another pattern, and I love using all of these rainbow colors because it's so bright and cheerful. I think it looks really, really great. Okay, so for this next pattern, I'm going to do just one color of paint using this blue shade, and I'm going to lift my hardboard out of that mat, and I'm going to be tipping it up. Now, if you don't plan to tip up your work surface and kind of move it around, you can tape your watercolor paper to the water medium mat. Um, I tend to always use a hardboard just because I know that it's very sturdy. And if I decide to, I can lift it up like this to help the water move across my painting. So I used a concentrated line of color at the very top, and then I'm dipping my brush into clean water and bringing it back to the surface of my watercolor paper and kind of pulling that color to the bottom. After I had one pass through done, while it was still wet, I added a little more just to get that blend. Then I used my heat tool to speed up the drying process. Like I mentioned before, if you want more intense color, you have to work in layers. So now I'm adding more of that blue shade over the top trying to get an even more intense blend. Now you could leave it like this, just like this at this point, but I decided that I really wanted to have sort of overlapping horizontal stripe areas. So I'm going to paint a little bit more and I'll dry it. And then I'm gonna come in and paint further up, dry that, and then just work my way all the way up to the top of this watercolor piece. This does have a similar look to what I've shown you guys in the past, which I've called a faux dip watercolor. It has a similar look, but in this case, I took it all the way to the top. It sort of looks like waves to me. I think it looks really, really cool. I'm gonna peel up all of that tape, and I have my background piece completely done. So this next background that I'm going to be doing is super colorful colorful and fun. And I'm going to be doing um, some stripes. These are going to be rainbow stripes and I'm going to work them in the exact rainbow order. So I'm gonna set that blue one aside and I'm gonna go right into the stripes. So I'm starting with that red shade and this is where having that flat brush uh, works out well. I did the flat brush completely flat for the wide stripes and then I turned it on its side for the more narrow stripes. This gives me a little bit of a variation in width on all of this painting. This background is super easy, that's all I'm doing, just those straight colors going across horizontally. For my last pattern I'm doing today, this isn't a repeating pattern or, or anything like that. I wanted to just have overlapping shapes. I thought it would be really fun to have overlapping rectangles and hearts and circles and stars, things like that. So the way I'm doing this is I'm going to be overlapping the colors that are next to each other on the rainbow. So I started with that red shade. I'm going to skip orange and go straight to yellow so that I can have them dry before I have the orange over the top. 
I'll skip green and go to blue and then dry those. I'm now going to take orange and paint a heart that overlaps the red and yellow. I'll take some green and overlap it on the yellow and blue with a green heart, with a green square, excuse me. And then I had a purple star down at the bottom. So this is a really fun kind of painting that you can do for your backgrounds. Add just a simple sentiment on top and it's all complete. So those are my backgrounds for today. I wanted to show you that I can pull out that little tray that I've created using the packaging and then it's nice and clean for the next time I want to paint something. Thanks so much for watching. You can check out the water media mat over at waffleflowercrafts.com or I'll have links down below in the supplies. Mm -hmm.